And today, abstract rate problems, which will be much like things that we've been doing, except that we are going to have a bunch of variables where we've had numbers in the past. So one equation that we're going to use is when we are buying things at a store. And you guys know if you go to the store and you want to buy seven of the same thing, you need to know how much does one cost, and the amount you owe the store is seven times the number that you are buying. So this is your total cost, and that's just going to be dollars or cents or euros or some kind of unit of money. This is going to be your unit rate. This will be when they say the cost per item. That will be when they say how many dollars per pizza or something like that. It has to be as a rate. And items are the number that you are buying. And we'll use that relationship to solve abstractly, so we'll have a lot of variables in these, problems like this. When you are doing these, pay attention. Do they write the letters with upper or lower case? It's not okay for you to switch. If they give you lower case, you use lower case. They are not the same. So for this one, we are going to start off with the cost equals the rate times the number of items for whatever the first situation is that we're given. So let's see what we can plug in. P pencils. Is that how much total you pay? Is that how much one costs? Or is that how many you're buying, Kinsley? Yeah, P pencils, that's how many you're buying. So that goes for the items. Then it says D dollars. Does it say dollars per pencil? So it's not a rate. So Sophie, where does D need to go? It needs to go in the total cost. Sorry about that, two of you answering, but that's okay. Sounds like you both, you both knew the correct answer. So that means our rate for one pencil is D divided by P. D over P dollars per pencil. Okay, we continue reading the problem. We've done plenty of these just with numbers where we then have a case two. Okay. Now, P pencils, so still the same number of pencils, right? So we can put a P right here. They are going to cost X more dollars. Is that more dollars per pencil or more dollars total? Kyle? Does that say more dollars per pencil? Does it say per pencil in there? So it's not a rate. So that's strictly the cost is now x more. So instead of d, it is now d plus x. And the rate is going to be the same. So now, if I divide both sides by p, the new rate is d plus x over p dollars per pencil. Then to finish up the problem, they ask us if we spend $20 total, how many pencils can we buy? Well, this rate is still rate two, so that's the same as rate two. So we're going to put in D plus X over P. And now we want to know how many items we can buy. I'm trying to find this number of items. So what I need to do, running out of room here, but I need to multiply both sides by, whoops, both sides by the reciprocal. So times P over D plus X on both sides, which will give me 20P over D plus X on the left. This will cancel out, and I will just have, that's my number of items, and in this case, it is pencils. 
and they like us to put parentheses around those things. So 20p over d plus x pencils. That one makes sense? I want to do a few more because these are kind of weird to get used to. So this time we have store A. So cost at store A is going to be the rate at store A times how many things we can buy. And you guys are used to shopping. Different stores have different prices on things, right? So that makes sense that we might kind of need to figure some of this out. Okay, M mops. Items, rate, total cost. Okay, that's how many we're going to buy. D dollars. Is that a rate or is that a total amount, Morgan? That's the total cost, so we're going to put the D over here, which means that the rate at store A is D over M. So far, so good. Okay, let's move on to store B. So at store B, the cost there will be the rate there times however many items we buy there. Okay, the mop sell for $1.75 less per mop. If it's per mop, are we talking about rate or total cost or number of items? Okay, so you're nodding your head yes to which one of those. So that is going to be that the rate is $1.75 less per mop than it was per mop at store A. So that's telling us that the rate at store B has to be D over M minus $1.75. Everybody with me there? We can get a common denominator on this and say that that is D minus 1.75 M all over M. So at this store, we want to know how many mops we can buy, so how many items we can buy if we spend Whoops, $1,500. Sorry about that. We're going to put this new rate in here, D minus 1.75M over M times the number of items. And number of items is what we're trying to find for our answer. So, Jack, what do I have to do to isolate number of items here? Mm -hmm. Have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, so by M over D minus 1.75M. So it's going to cancel out here on the right, and I have the number of items at store B. And when I multiply this 1500 by this reciprocal, I get 1500M over D minus 1.75M. Put parentheses around it, and that is how many mops. I am buying. So it's just a matter of paying attention to your variables and plugging things in in the right places. Questions with those two examples? Okay, we're also going to do some of these with another familiar formula, which is RTW equals J. So for this one, let's see, what do we have when we first start off? So case one. M workers, where do I plug that in? Aiden? Where does the M go? Okay, so I've got RTW equals J, and I'm going to put lowercase m there for the number of workers. Uh, Catalina, what do I do with H? Okay, H is the time, lowercase h. C articles. Grace, what do I do with C? A J or R, that's what's left. That's how many they're making. And so that means that the rate is C divided by HM. Okay, now let's change the situation and see what's going on. D workers quit. What does that mean I'm doing? Ava, what do I do with the D workers who quit?
So M minus D, and then where does that go? So that means the number of workers that I have now is M minus D. I'm going to try to find how many hours. So that's what I need to figure out. And my rate's going to stay the same. They still work just as fast. That's how much each person can do in an hour. So that is still going to be C over HM. And they're going to produce the same number of articles, so that's still a C, right? Okay, so we want just T2. So we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of everything that we have times T2. So let's multiply everything. So this was C in the numerator. So let's multiply with a C in the denominator. This was HM in the denominator, so let's put that in the numerator. This M minus D was in the numerator, so let's put that in the denominator. So would that be the reciprocal I need to multiply by? Thumbs up, thumbs down, we're looking okay. All right, see mostly thumbs up. So that means everything cancels out here on the left except for our new time. And then I have C times HM over C times M minus D on the right. What do I do with that, Abby? The C's will cancel over here so that I am left with HM over C times M minus D. Put parentheses around the whole thing and label some units. This was how many hours, so I label it hours. Question, Grace? Uh, yes, I canceled it, but then rewrote it. Thanks for catching that. Now are we good? Any questions there? Okay, now for a job some of you will like. Um, you'll have a lot of problems where the job is drinking milk or drinking soda or eating cookies or eating pizza. So kind of a nice job to have. So we're going to do these also with RTW equals J. So we're going to start off case one here. G gallons of milk. That's how much milk the children are going to drink. Is that going to be R, T, W, or J? Chloe. That's going to be their terrible job of how much of this can they drink. I guess it's terrible if you don't like milk, but not so bad if you do like milk. So they're going to drink the G gallons. Okay, Z children. So Ryan Lamb, where does the Z go? That's going to be how many are doing this awful job of drinking the milk? Um, nine days, Natalie, where does that go? And then if we, saw, if we isolate the rate, that means the rate is lowercase g over 9z gallons per child per day if we really wanted to write in units on that. So everybody good with case one? Okay, we're going to move over to case two. And each kid is still going to drink the same amount of milk, so we're still going to have G over 9Z. We want to find how many days, so we're trying to figure out what our new time is here. And now how many children are drinking? What are we going to have there? Gina, how many? How many children? What? Z plus four now. And so we better put parentheses around that so we remember that's one amount. And are they still going to do G gallons, Jack? Uh, yes. Read it carefully. This time they're going to drink K gallons, so that's how much they're going to do. We're trying to isolate the new time, so we need to multiply by the reciprocal of everything that's times that T2. So we're going to put the G in the denominator, the 9Z in the numerator. The Z plus 4 was in the numerator, so we're going to put that in the denominator. And I don't see anything that's canceling here. So it looks to me like T2 is 9KZ, since 
the 9 coefficient has to always go first, over g times z plus 4, and that is going to be days. So do these more or less make sense to you guys? Okay, then let's work on number three on our new set together with the setup.